the youngest speaker at ET Auto Global Auto Business Summit 2018. He's a child prodigy who mastered C++ by the age of three, Java by the age of five. He's the country's youngest engineer, a 16-year-old Stanford certified whiz kid who dropped out of school to pursue his entrepreneurial dreams. He's here to teach us a little something about autonomous vehicle technology. Please join me in welcoming the co-founder of ATI Motors, Saad Nasser. A round of applause for him, please, sir. He's 15 year old, the youngest entrepreneur. But I think fortunately, uh, MC didn't talk of my age, would be for approximately four times. So we balance out. So Saad, uh, Nice to have you with us. So what I hear about you, you know, there's a saying that truth can be stranger than fiction. At the age of two, Saad was disassembling all the toys and assembling them back. Java at the age of five, C++ at the age of seven, the IRS award, which is the award specially given by the government for innovation and research at the age of 11. So how did this journey start? So I just enjoyed, uh, I just enjoy like, uh, science and technology and uh, my dad had a library and I used to read that when I was uh, young so that's how I learned uh, programming when mm -hmm. I was five but I'm sure there would be somebody I'm sure you had that that entry enterprise there but did somebody nudge you motivate you or was a catalyst in developing these interests not really not really yeah. self-made totally your father sitting there Pervez, he's saying you had no role in his development so do you agree with that? <laughs> Any teachers in school? So uh, in second grade, my uh, class teacher, Ms. Sina, uh, re uh, realized what I was doing and introduced me to uh, my uh, mentor, uh, who was uh, at the time at Intel, Mr. Doshi, who had uh, taught me uh, computer architecture. And it was around that time uh, I had finished the NAND to Tetris course. What is that course? Can you name it again? The NAND to Tetris course. And uh, for ignorant people like us, can you define this course, what does it lead means? So, um, so basically you build an entire computer system from NAND gates. So you build like a CPU and then the software stack that goes on top. So, so that's the level which he achieved, you achieved that point of time. Now, coming to, you know, one of the challenges which one hears about the engineering education system is that it is very regimented, a lot by rote. And you got admission in a school which would obviously follow the same process systems. So did the school break the clutter for you or you broke the school? So <laughs> they, they gave me a lot of flexibility. Uh, so um, by fourth grade, my attendance record was already really poor. Huh? And Your record was poor? Yeah. In what? In which subject? In just attendance. Ach, attendance only. Okay. <laughs> my, yeah, my test scores were okay. <laughs> okay. That's an understatement. Huh? <laughs> okay. So... School gave you the flexibility. Yeah, hmm? and at fifth grade, I had uh, basically uh, dropped out of school. I was re still registered, but I was So now you classes. are a registered in the school or dropped out? Or they call you a student, alumni? What do they call you now? So, I, yeah, uh, I'm technically still registered. You're technically still yeah. registered, huh? So that, that, that's something very unique. The other thing which I found was this IRS award, which is a award started by the government of India, uh, basically for initiatives taken in research and innovation. Uh, what was your project? How, when, at what age you got that award? So I won the uh, Intel IRIS award uh, when I was 11. Huh. So uh, my project was on uh, multi-core processors. Okay. And uh, you won this. And I saw a quote from Sam Petroda, who's an icon for the industry. I mean, what innovations he's done. And he said the courses which you are pursuing were much advanced and even for people at the age of 30, 35. So do you agree with him? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing which, uh, how did you continue education? Because the school couldn't give you that uh, background, I'm sure. You did a lot of reading in Java, C++ on your own. But how did you continue with your education or your insight or gaining knowledge? How did you go about it? So um, there were a lot of uh, online resources that I used, like online courses I um, have completed quite a few of them. When uh, you say quite a few, could you just mention the numbers? So uh, it's hard to get a number, maybe it's like so much. 10, huh? yeah, 10 plus 20. 20, 20 courses, 20, eh? Yeah. So you've done it from those, uh, the courses which are online? Yeah. And from the universities in USA? Yeah. 
Which are the universities? So um, I've done courses from uh, MIT, um, Stanford. And so here's a man, young man. I, I don't know how to address him. Do I call him a boy? Do I call him adolescent? Do I call him a teen? Do I call him a young man? Do I call him a, a matured man? How do I call you? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I call you all in one. <laughs> yeah, so these were courses which you pursued on your own. Yeah. But you found these courses quite useful. Yeah. Other thing is, I was looking at the courses you've done uh, through the online. They're very varied. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, cryptography, aviation. So they're not in, slotted in one stream even. They're quite varied across science. So was it a thought out process or your interests keep varying day by day? So um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it was yeah, it was somewhat ad hoc. I. Uh, hmm. I just uh, looked at uh, what was available at the time and what I found interesting, mm. and I yeah, and yeah, I primarily these are uh, a good starting base to just figure out what's there and. And how much time you took for uh, completing each course? They they usually were on fixed schedules, so um, they would vary from six to twelve weeks. And you read them in the first attempt, I'm sure, with honors. <laughs> and not all of them had all the lectures available up front, so. Okay, so that was. Uh, but you found these courses quite interesting. Yeah, they were very interesting. Now, one thing I want to know, we all know is you're, you're, a, you're a genius, you've done something innovative, but I want to understand you as a person. What are your interests beyond innovation, technology, science? What are your other interests beyond this now? We're coming to a different field. So um, yeah, in my spare time, I just do other, uh, my other side projects are also uh, mostly tech. Uh, I sometimes play video games. Okay, so that again comes back to technology. You know, I'm talking about software issues. How many, which are the last movies of Shah Rukh Khan you've seen? I actually haven't watched any Hindi movies. So you haven't watched Hindi movies, okay, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And how much time you watch Virat Kohli or, or Dhoni in cricket? Uh, so I probably haven't seen a cricket match in like the last couple of okay. years. So. so you know, one thing which Sad is saying that if you want to achieve something in life, the focus has to be very sharp and clear. We in lesser mortals get distracted a lot. Do you agree? And uh, Parvez, one question to you. Can somebody give him the mic to his father also? Give us some interesting insights about that as a person as he's growing, beyond the technology. Something very interesting which nobody knows of, which could help us a lot to understand him Incidentally, Mr. Parvez himself is a very famous, is a very good mathematician. So, it, he inherited a lot of mathematics from him. But just give us some insights about, as a person when he grew up. No, he was just an ordinary kid. Ordinary kid? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, he, he's got a younger brother. They play, they pull Achha. each other's leg. They pull each other's leg, eh? Yeah. Achha. You won't find anything different. That's yeah, nothing that different. When he gets down to work, he's very focused. Okay, so he's very down to earth, very this thing, but very, yes, very yes. focused in what he does. Yes. So focused and intense, which is there. But he does on his own. He's on a self-motivation uh, trip. Yes, yes. We There's never nothing. had anything to do. We only cleared the way for him. Okay. One of the challenges, and this is a question to first him or to you both, whoever wants to answer is, when you achieve phenomenal success at a young age, the expectations from you go up sky high. How do you deal with those expectations? No, it was, uh, as parents, we were very clear, when, even when he was two year old, hmm. that we wanted him to do things that he enjoyed. Ultimately, his happiness was what mattered, okay. not what he achieved or did. So, no pressures on you. You do uh, what you uh, like. Yeah. So, you do what is your passion. Yeah. So, you know, he's a clear case of dictum. You know, they say, make your hobby your profession and you'll not work a single day in your life. Is that true with you? Yeah, I enjoy what I do. You enjoy what you do. Okay, very good. So that's something that he gives a lot of insight. So, I mean, uh, if you tell Amitabh Bachchan and Shah Rukh Khan that he doesn't know their name, they'll be disappointed, but, but we are gaining something phenomenal out of it. Now, coming to it, uh, we have people from the auto industry, we dis heard about this autonomous vehicle which you're talking of. Uh, did you collaborate with any institutes in India, in Bangalore or some way to develop your skills? Um, any work which you did with any other science institute or any companies in India, in Bosch. Bangalore? So, uh, I had interned at the Robert Bosch Center uh, in ISC. Uh, in in initial science, yeah. which is there, okay. For a couple so of months. So, that did help you a lot. Because that's, a, that's supposed to be the, the cradle of uh, innovation in India, yeah. as far as science is concerned. Now, coming to it, you know, generally we have seen 
there are people who are very you know very good in basic fundamentals of science technology which you are there is no two opinion i mean what you achieved people take generations or years to come but they are able to they remain limited to the field of pure sciences or pure mathematics but what i find very interesting about you that you have made at a very young age a shift to entrepreneurship so how did this change happen or how how why was the, what was the st stroking point for this so um so uh, it's some it's interesting so um i one one of my co-founders in uh, the startup i'm running uh, he used to mentor me in math so every tuesday i used to go to his office and mm. used to learn some new things mm. so a lot around that time uh, uh, saurabh who's uh, our third co-founder he was uh, discussing various things with dr vinay so we were working on various interesting engineering problems and that's when uh, and that's when we decided that we want to do something uh, a challenging engineering problem that also has uh, commercial viability so autonomy was very interesting because multidisciplinary and challenging hmm. but uh, there are a lot of international car companies which are talking about autonomous cars that's not your area of focus so uh, i mean autonomy can be applied in a uh, very br uh, broad area so it's not it's not just cars on public roads uh, we are focusing on uh, cargo movement so subdan cargo movement inside private spaces inside private spaces inside private spaces which would mean basically inside organizations or companies premises so you can imagine things like factory complexes factory complexes any other area where it could be used so yeah in general uh, so any so place like uh, ports hmm. so what's unique about that uh, you know they say in india since uh, there's a lot of fear on autonomous vehicle they say that it'll take away our employment and it can be unsafe something happened with one of the cars i think which uber was using so that sort of fear is not there in this project so um i mean uh, autonomous vehicles do bring uh, safety to the table so they, they bring lots, safety to safer. the table yeah okay uh, and especially in our uh, environment where uh, the whole environment is more well defined it's uh, much easier to achieve very high levels of safety hmm. and definitely much better than human drivers so what is your market which you are considering for this is bangalore the market india the market so um we we plan to sell globally globally yeah so all gentlemen who are here and ladies think global he set his eyes straight to the global world not limited to india obviously he'll sell in india also yeah but global market but will be more relevant for global yeah so um in uh, global market because of uh, uh, labor shortages and driver shortages makes a lot more sense uh, it also i i mean uh, even in private space in india um in certain situations uh, it does make more sense because we do bring improved safety any other b unique benefits of autonomous this vehicles which you are talking about carrier in terms one is safety is clearly an advantage anything else which which would not be possible otherwise for even normal vehicles which are meant to be do I mean uh big uh, first of all you can uh, dramatically increase throughput you can increase throughput yeah okay which and of course you can try uh you if you have a, a more reliable uh, scalable logistics platform hmm. in internally people can you can just do things that were previously not possible and flexibility is uh, is uh, inbuilt yeah. into the entire thing okay when did you start on this project So we uh, it's we're now around one and a half years old, and the company is called what? What is the company called? Adi Motors. Adi. 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 So what does the word Adi come from? So it's Adi. It's uh, Adi. A T I. Adi. Yeah. Okay, Adi. So it's uh, Sanskrit for superlative. Arey. So so the right word Adi. Huh? हमारे लिए हिंदी में होता हर चीज की Adi होती है. So what he's saying Adi is from the Sanskrit superlative. So that's what you put yourself Adi, huh? which is there. So that's a very interesting name to have. short crisp and to the point and relates back to the technology and how much is the payload which this vehicle can carry so um we have two variants one can carry uh, 150 kg mm -hmm. and uh, another one the other one can carry 500 so i, I we had a video which we you had said uh, uh, can we share that video with them just to get an idea and you could take them through the video which will give a better illustration what the vehicle is all about it's still at the prototype stage can we have the video of the uh, autonomous vehicle Please volume low, volume. He'll do no volume. 
volume. Yeah. So this is our simulator. No volume. Yeah. So here we have completely modeled the vehicle. We can create uh, scenarios with speed bumps and other things and simulate how our vehicle is going to behave. So for instance, here we model uh, left turn and we've actually driven the vehicle autonomously through this. Mm -hmm. So we can run the same software and get virtual miles and test our. Mm -hmm. And here, this is our test uh, track at ISC. So this is our uh, research prototype. Uh, so you can see it's uh, two front wheels and one rear wheel. So it's designed from ground up for an autonomy. So it has an extremely simple drive train. It's just two motors. Uh, so it's a differential drive. So we can do uh, things like obstacle detection. So we have a LIDAR and cameras uh, and a radar. And we can detect obstacles at stop as well as uh, avoid obstacles. So the the person on the right here is holding a kill switch. So it's supposed to go straight, but it saw uh, it directed a person in front of it and... Uh, took a detour. Yeah, it took a detour around it. Okay. And this is not... When do we see the commercial rollout of this product? So this is our uh, commercial prototype. So this, uh, okay. this can actually carry 150 kgs of cargo. Okay. So here we are doing a test in a go-karting track. Okay. So when will it be in the market? So uh, right now our plan is for uh, mid next year. Mid next year. So you know a lot of marketing people here, they will say why don't you start bookings and generate income. So have you started any bookings for this? Or start taking some advances for payment, nothing. You, when you show the product, then only you sell it. It's, and it's primarily B2B. So. It's a primarily B2B, so not with customers, yeah. which is there. So One thing which is interesting I found was, yeah, you're yeah, saying something. Yeah, so here uh, we have our uh, example uh, UI. So you can basically say you want uh, it to pick up something from a certain station and deliver it to uh, another station. So this okay. is a demo we ran. So you can, so you can see uh, what our LIDAR can see. So here the, on the LIDAR you can see it, can, it detects obstacles. and Very unique. And this is a unique ability of a vehicle. So it's extremely maneuverable. We can actually do an in-place turn. Okay, and the wheel you said is the rear wheel is? Yeah, the rear wheel ju is just a, like a powered caster wheel. It just follows the direction of the okay. front two uh, differential wheels. So rear wheel is one, huh? There's only one rear wheel. And front wheel is two. And two front wheels. So does it, it goes against the natural, you know, we've been taught, you know, that even a three-wheeler front is one, rear is two. So you're going reverse way. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the tadpole configuration. This is a, so this configuration yeah. helps, which yeah. is there. The other thing which I saw unique was the name Sherpa. How do you get this name, Sherpa? So uh, basically, it's uh, it carries stuff, but it's also intelligent. Okay, it, so anything to do with the Himalayas, we had the, the first person who climbed Mount Everest along in Norway, Tenzing, which was there. Is inspired with him? Because they are Sherpas who take you all the way to the Himalayas. They know the lay of the land and they are intelligent people. Yeah, so we wanted to, uh, so basically it's, a, it's intelligent. It's so it's the code name and the brand name also both. Yeah. Huh? Good. You know, uh, since you have limited time, I would rather uh, anticipate questions from the audience. Uh, as uh, the earlier speakers have said that, keep the question short. So I will make the questions. You know, if you see in KVC, they say ki aapka samay shuru hota hai ab. In 30 seconds, if you don't complete, the, the connection is cut off. I don't know whether you can do it here. So please keep your questions short in 30 seconds and we'll give time to uh, Nasser to answer the questions. So any questions, please raise your hands. Yeah, this is a case from EDS. We are partner of Dassault. Could you just, just please stand up? Because yeah, uh, this is a case from EDS. We are Dassault Systems partner mm -hmm. in India. Just want to check, uh, understand from you, apart from academics, what are your interests? Because in such a uh, less age, you have achieved so much of technology and you are very technology savvy. So I'd like to understand what are your general interests for a kid of 14? I was, sorry, I'm using kid, but 16 <laughs> year is not a big age, right? So he's saying you are still a kid of 15. You have you achieved something of a lifetime. What are your other interests, which I also asked you? Beyond the areas where you excel, any other interests you have? Uh, not really. Uh, I sometimes play sport, some sports. What sports do you like? So, uh, I used to play cricket. Uh, Ajay. As a bowler, batsman? Both. Both. All-rounder? Yeah. Okay. So, he's saying his uh, interest still, you go back to the area of technology. But he likes playing cricket, and as he said, his father was saying that he likes to pull his brother's leg. So that's <laughs> that interest. That still pursues or not? Yeah. <laughs> you still pull your brother's leg? Your brother's elder to you, or younger to you? He's younger. So you can afford to pull his leg. <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> okay. Uh, so that's what he's saying. One thing which is there, you know, you know, when we in our career and lesser mortals like us, we say at the age of 20 we are here, 25 we want to be deputy manager, 30 we want to be DGM, 40 we want to do here. So you are already 50, you achieved so much. So I'll put a question to you. Where do you want to be at the age of 25? Say, if we take, take the time clock nine years further, you're 16 now? Yeah. Okay. So you're not allowed to vote because the voting age is 18. Yeah. You're not allowed to marry because the marriageable age is 21 for men. So, so, so now we are putting, taking it nine years ahead. So where do you want to be at the age of 25? What would you have achieved in? Do some future projection because you're so good in science, mathematics. So do some future projection and tell us where would you be at the age of 25? I really haven't thought that far ahead. Achha, he hasn't thought, oh my God, you think of technologies generations ahead and you don't think of this nine years ahead. So that's interesting. Yes, any more questions, please? Anybody in the front row, any questions you have? Please, uh, it's unique, I mean, to get into his mind and this thing, how words makes a genius yeah, stick? Uh, I think congratulations where you are. Uh, you said safety is one prime factor which is giving us advantage in the autonomous vehicle. Have you thought of what, when you are doing your study also for the uh, Indian situation, where we have roughly 1,50,000 people dying every year on roads. Uh, have you thought how you can solve this problem? It's actually a, a national disaster. It's a national security problem. So one is, of course, in your product which has come up, but have you in your analysis, do you also come across this figure and have you thought about it? What can be done in the existing situation, either it's a retrofitment or doing something on existing vehicles to save people? So, uh, for instance, one thing that could be uh, really successful in India is uh, one of the largest applications for autonomy as of now is uh, ADAS systems. And uh, ADAS systems for motorcycles would make, uh, or two-wheelers, would, would make them so much safer. So safety is really looking at. Any more last question? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Who has not asked a question? I think you do have asked a question, so. I have not asked it. Uh, you're not, but please keep the question short. Yeah, I am very short. See, you are talking about the, the vehicle which is a three-wheeler and internal movement. And I'm looking forward to know from you like off-the-road vehicles like golf carts and e-buses are basically four-wheelers. Are you having something in your mind to work on that which really would be requiring a driverless kind of golf carts and those buses for internal movement, for colony movement, those kind of things? So right now we are focusing on cargo movement uh, because uh, both because of regulatory and ethical issues. So even, even I am telling you it is off the road cars. It is not on the road cars. So no no regulations saying? required for golf carts. It is in their movement. There is no registration, no driver licensing required for that. So sir, uh, what Sad has been saying also that he has been also focusing on off road. I told him off road only. Golf uh -huh. carts, e-buses are for the internal movements only uh -huh. where you don't need any registration of vehicle. You don't need any driver uh, 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 this licensing for that. So I think he said something. Passenger, anything you would like to reply? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, passenger, uh, carrying, when you're carrying people, it just uh, becomes a bit more complicated from a safety perspective. Hmm. But you are talking about the safety only. Like, once it is a safety, you are carrying material or passenger. No. See, that ethically, you talk about a work as safety. It's more safer. But if it is safer, it is safer for the human being also. I am, I'm... So you, you need to be clear sir, yourself. Sir, yeah. sir, this is a suggestion you are giving, but his focus is he wants to focus at the moment, concentrate on that area. Huh? Okay, point, well, point Yes, one small question. Yeah, uh, the, how, what is answer. the weight capacity for this and how much capacity you want to increase for this carry movement? So it's uh, right now we are doing two variants. One is uh, 150 kgs and one is 500 kgs. Okay. So okay. Uh, can we have a last, very last question? Now this last question will be to the person who has not asked a single question up till now. Yeah, please. Hi, my name is Rajesh Bajaj. I'm from uh, automobile industry and digital marketing industry. So what's your strategy for educating people about uh, all the pros and cons of uh, uh, what you've created? Uh, so Besides being a child project, everybody knows that you are amazing. So you're saying, uh, did you like to educate people on something? Or you think you don't want to educate people? You want to first give your products which educate people? So it's, yeah, I mean, uh, autonomy is now somewhat in the public eye, so most people do know about it, so that helps. 
Okay, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure meeting you, and I request all of you to give a stand up and give him a standing ovation. Pleasure talking to you.